Hey everyone, it's Thursday the 12th of August and the time is 5.45 in the evening. And this video is part one of the Saracen rebuild. So, here it is, up in the bike stand, ready. So, in this video, we're going to take this apart as I am completely rebuilding it. You know, as I said in the other video, I bought this as a project for myself, so I think we should get stuck in. Um, what I want to be left with is basically a rolling frame, so I'm going to put some wheels in it and leave the forks in, and that's pretty much it. Everything else is coming off. If it's not needed to make it roll around, it's not staying on the frame. So. That means both front and rear derailleur mech, derailleur mech sorry, have got to come off. The seat and seat post, the rear brake, the front brake, the crank set, and the bottom bracket as well. And I've got a pair of wheels that are holding air just behind it there that I'm going to put in as well. To roll it around even easier. So these wheels can come off. If you're a cyclist, and you like doing your own repairs or you just fix bikes for like a little hobby or something then I would strongly suggest getting yourself one of these stands I got mine from Liddles a couple of years ago um, so it's Crivet brand but uh, it's been a really good stand apart from breaking there which was actually my own fault which I've actually fixed with a little metal L bracket just to support that sort of cracked that part of the clamp um, it's only because I caused the bike to go like that it's completely broke that bit off because um, I didn't have this clamp shut that's what it was it's fine when it's all clamped like that in fact it's not in there it's not in there that well but it's holding so yeah having a bike in a stand like this makes life so much easier um, I've already got the handlebar off. I was, took it off after I got done filming um, the last video where I introduced the bike because I needed some measurements for some parts like uh, my handlebar stem which I've ordered two of. I might just use the one that I've temporarily put on there now. Um, as you'll probably notice that's not the same BMX style one that was on there because it's here. Um, but I've bought two because they're not that expensive, not the ones I bought anyway. I'm not, you know, I don't want to build a hugely expensive bike. Um, I just want to build something that looks decent, that's all, looks nice, at least to me. You know, I'm not building it to please anyone else. And I'm not one of these types that want high end expensive parts on a bike. The only bit I won't skimp on are the gear shifters because I don't like grip shifts so I won't go for cheap old grip shifts which is why I've got some I think they're Shimano Shimano what was a Shimano V-brake oh hang on what's it got written under there I don't know it's made in Malaysia and the model number. But yeah, I wouldn't. It's my favourite style. The reason I'm using 8 speed is because I've already got them. Along with an 8 speed back wheel, as mentioned in the last video, so I thought I might as well go with it. Oh, oh yeah, I just took the dust caps off, didn't I? Right. Uh, I don't need. I'm losing track on where I am now. Let's get this bottom bracket off out of the way. Not the bottom bracket, the crank. May have to replace this as well. I don't really want to because these teeth look okay. Still a fair bit of life left in those, but I don't think I'm going to get these pedals off. And I'm not using it with these horrible pedals on. But uh, that's an al aluminium crank. Should I say aluminum? 
that's a steel pedal so those that know will know that you get um, a reaction in the threads where the two different metals meet and that's what's happened there this one's um, this one's worse than the other side so I doubt I'm going to get it off so I'm sure I could pick one up from somewhere but for now so I can get the frame and everything all cleaned up still in two minds on whether to replace this whole bottom bracket or not because it's not bad a tiny bit of play in there but it's not bad but what are the chances of me going through all this effort to build the bike just to have the bearings go in that bottom bracket for me and then have to dismantle all of this again and replace it so to be perfectly honest bottom brackets even a sealed one is it isn't expensive so Anyway, let's drop that one there What you need to get these off is one of two tools that I've come across. Anyway, you may need something different. But the two most common, I should say, would be a 14mm socket you'd need or an 8mm hexagon key. Um, like I said, there are other styles of bottom bracket that you would need other tools for, but these are the two most common. And you will also need your puller. And again, a little hex. I'm going to use that because I love using Allen keys like this. <clears throat> so what you need to do is screw this into here, hopefully. If this doesn't screw in, then I'll have to use brute force to get it off. I'm not going to be able to do it up here, and it won't be pretty. <laughs> and at the moment, this doesn't want to screw in. See, so that should screw in there nicely. The aid of a 15mm spanner. I just can't get that to bite. It just does not want to. So it starts and pull straight out. I think the threads are knackered, so I think a new crank will be in order. So I'll give the other side a whirl, but I may actually have to take this downstairs and smash it off with a hammer. But as I'm going to replace it, then smashing it with a hammer isn't going to hurt it. Um, I don't like using that method, especially if I'm going to reuse a crank, because it can damage this. Because you'll have to hit it from here. Um, if you want to preserve the crank, but if you don't, then I'm just going to smash it into sprockets and bash it off that way. But I will, in a bit, try the other side. That's a bit of a, a bugger. I mean, you know, I can't see much. I could try a little bit of steel wool in there just to try and clean the threads up a bit. But I've got a feeling, even if I can get it screwed in, <clears throat> it's just going to pull threads straight out of it because I've had that happen before on these alloy cranks. So just do this, try and get some. A lot of shavings of some sort coming out. I don't know if that's off my steel wool or if that's off the crank itself. <sighs> now let's give it one more try. Now it's looking a lot cleaner in there. Ooh, am I going to get lucky? It's a definite maybe. I got lucky, guys. screwing in it's going to make life easier to get the chain off because it is wedged down the back there that means I won't have to yank on it so hard you 
you screw it in or are you just putting around and you are screwing in? There we go. It's just the threads needed a good clean. In case you're wondering, you don't need specialist tools just for general maintenance such as replacing brake cables, gear cables, sometimes not even a chain. There's a New chains will have a master link, so you can use a split link. So, if you're replacing a chain, you could just take a hacksaw to that and cut it off. That's what I'm going to do with this because it's too rusty, and I'm not risking my chain splitter on a rusty, horrible chain. So I just cut them off. I've got a new chain. I don't need it. So off it comes. Right. This might be a bit difficult. As in, it may not want to come off. Again, aluminium on a steel shaft. So, this may still end up being something that I'm going to have to do downstairs. Or even on the floor, actually, but I don't really... Um, we'll come back to that, we'll get some of this other crap off of here, such as these, which are actually very nice brakes. So, these bolts are 5 mil hexagons. It says, should we have a game? Nope. The bolt says no. There we go, I got it. I think someone might have uh, chewed the end of this bolt a little bit. I was going to renew them, but I think some four new ones might be in order. I've got spares, but they're not very good. <clears throat> to me, as I'm building the bike to look nice, I don't want to use crappy bits, do I? And that bolt's too short as well. I've just realised that that should be longer than that. These are quite nice. STXRC. I'm sure I kept some of these. I know I said I got rid of most of my bike parts. I'm pretty certain I kept a decent set of those. I think. <laughs> um, this chain's going to have to come off. Am I actually going to get there with a bloody hacksaw or am I going to have to use my splitter? You're going to come out of there, or are you fully wedged in there? Can I wiggle you out? Oh, yes, maybe. Get out of there, you bastard. No. Yeah. Close enough. Um, not actually too bad there, so I'll risk it. Slot that onto the tool. Not opened it up enough. Don't like using these tools on rusty, horrible, seized up chains because I've broken several of these in the past doing that. Show you in a minute what can break. I've just done that round the wrong way. I've actually snapped the ends off, or I've bent these little bits in the middle. In fact, I've just noticed some of them have got bent already. Can you see that? <clears throat> Don't think they got bent right now. Done it round the wrong way. So I've got, I don't know if you can see from there, but I've got the uh, rivet on this end of the chain, which means it won't go through the derailleur mech. And as this is quite a stiff, rusty chain, I'm going to want as little to pull through there as possible. So 
I'm just going to take that off completely, hopefully. He says, there we go, got it in there. I'm going to have to go find something to wipe away my sweat. It's bloody hot up here. Whee! There we go. And that should put it just like that. That can go in a bit. Right. Chain split tool on there. Springy mechanisms. Right, something that can go in the bin. No good. If you really wanted to, you might be able to rejuvenate it. I think that's got bent. We'll have to straighten that out, possibly. It's a little difficult to tell, to be honest. Could just be the angle I'm looking at it at. Another set of tools I've got at Lidl's. I've actually got a lot of my tools from Lidl's, to be honest. And uh, I've not had any problems with them. I might put that with the radius screw, with the mounting screw, back in the frame so I don't lose it. If I get it thrifted by it. I'm not going to lose it because I guarantee I'll put it somewhere and I'll end up losing it. Um, one more thing to take off this side, and that's on part of the front V brake. And what I'm going to do drop the bike out of here and turn it around. Probably going to get a new set of V brakes for this as well. I'm not going disc. And, uh, well, actually, as these handlebars are swung around, the forks are swung around like this. I might as well do this one while I'm at it. Which again, just a 5mm hexagon key. On older bikes, it'll probably be a 10mm nut, 10mm um, bolt. 99% of the time, at least with the bugs I've come across, it's a 5mm hex. I'm putting brake blocks in this as well. I'm not going to be using old crap. I would like to be able to have sorts of cobwebs all over this as well. Damn spiders. Pain in the ass. Whee! A little bit of play in there. I'll go ahead and replace it. You can as well, and some of these um, pullers use a 15mm um, spanner on there. If you desire. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to leave that in there until I get the black out of the stand. We're nearly done, actually. Tilt that the other way. It's getting lighter. It's still not light enough! Now, a bit of a tight 
quarter there. And we've got the front end a bit too low for my liking. Right. Yeah, suspension coil is not the best thing to get hold of, but that's the only thing I can get hold of on this one. I wonder if I just pick that up. Although, on the other hand, I might as well get the wheels out. Now, as far as I know, the wheels are not buckled. I've not seen... Well, the back one has got a buckle in it. That makes me even more glad now. Something just sounded like a drill. Now I've got all the weight to the front. So, <laughs> so the only problem with this stand, you get the weight one end or the other and that tilts. Let's just quickly uh, release the front wheel. Twat. Might help. 15 mil nuts on the wheels. I was wondering. And typically, because one nut is loose, the other one won't undo. It's just spinning the bloody axle. Now let's try it. bits to come off. That was it. Okay, I've got to respray those. But then again, for 35 quid, I could just buy a new pair. Although the ones I found on eBay haven't got the um, stems for the V-brake, and I haven't got a wheel for um, what do you call it? Disc. find something on Amazon. I suppose I could look later, it won't hurt, would it? Right, let's get this other brake off. If I want to replace this one because it is a bit rusty. Actually, it's very rusty. <laughs> Probably still works. No, it has rusted up from the feel of it. It's almost in a bit of rubber like that putting on it, but I better keep hold of that bit. Is it, is it rusted? It is. <laughs> it's actually uh, rusted. So I better hope that one of the ones I've got on the floor is going to work. It might. But you know what? Actually, to be honest, I think this is almost a like for like replace. Almost. Oh yeah, that's got to fit. Okay, so I can chuck that one in the bin then. That one just needs a good old clean. And that one 
moves. It does work. The other one doesn't. <laughs> State of it. Bit rusty. And like I said I cannot get that to. <clears throat> no. So we know where that can go. Straighten the bin. Uh, that's pretty much it, to be honest. All I need to do is just pop a couple of wheels in. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. I'll take this out on the thing, so I'll need to turn it. of a bitch. <clears throat> right. Actually, this is going to look quite nice with a pair of black rims in it. So, in with wheel one, hopefully. It's uh, a little bit on the stiff side. Prepare the handlebar and then I'll uh, take it out the thing and do the uh, well, all them tricky bits such as getting the wheels in. So, to prep the handlebar, I've just got to take this shite off of it. So, handlebar grips, as I'm not going to be uh, reusing them. That's better. I'm just going to come off the easy way. So we'll just slice them down like that. I hope. If you want to um, take grips off that you want to keep, what you want to do. Get a screwdriver. I'm not show you on the other one actually. Wedge it under there. So you got a gap like that. A little gap there. And under that little gap, spray some WD-40, and then work the screwdriver around, and that will um, release it. In fact, I think that might be easier. I've got the can here, and I show you what I mean. So I've got my screwdriver in there. What I'm going to do is get some WD. You don't want a lot. In fact, what I'm going to do first is work that screwdriver in a bit more. Like that. And it'll help if I just loosen off the um, brake lever. Open it down a bit. It's going to be a bit easier, I think. Hang on. Might make life a little easier. If I loosen all of this off, then I can slide it back out of the way of the handlebar grip. So there's that. Going to need is it this one? Is that a bit thin? No. Correct size. That's the one. The grip shift. There we go. I hope the other side comes up um, off as easy as that. Ouch, just nip my hand. Slide that out of the way. Now it gives a bit more work for it, you see. So now I can get that in there. Oh, actually. We've got to just make sure I'm on camera. That's better. Quick squirt there, squirt there, and that'll soak it in. And then all you gotta do is 
just work it around and it should pop that seal. Oh, oh, get it, seal. Bad joke, I know. I'm not good at doing good jokes though. It's probably where I'll find that some bugger is super glued to pissing things on. Yeah, because that doesn't want to break free yet. I have got the screwdriver a lot further in though. That thing is doing my head in. Where's that hex key set? Do that up just enough to hold it. Looking for the screwdriver that's already in there. Yep. The spider's just fallen. Ow! From the grip shift. I did not want that to do that. It's hard work keeping you in the shot. I'm trying to watch what I'm doing. And get off my screwdriver, you little bastard. Don't piss off and crawl over something else, will you? someone did that get glued or is it just on there stupidly tight no oh, no it was just on there stupidly tight but there's one but yeah that's the uh, principle I'm gonna do it the easy way <laughs> I'm just gonna cut it off because I've got a new pair down there and there we go and there we go that's the quicker and easier way. Stanley knife. <laughs> but like I said, if you're changing your shifters or your brake levers or something because they broke or you're just putting new ones on, some nicer ones, you want to preserve your handlebar grips and that's the best way to do it. You can use other things like um, washing up liquid or... Um, water probably the better ones to use when you're putting grip shifts on because at least with um, washing up liquid and water it dries quicker I have found as well as been told that if you use WD-40 they don't grip to the handlebar WD-40 can take a lot longer to dry up so Another tool from Lidl's, by the way, this um, hexagon set. Designed to go in one of those little um, bags that go under your saddle. It's that sort of multi tool, and you've got a multitude of them. Again, the only bugbear I've got with this one is the. Um, <laughs> it's a bit of an ironic design. There's a bolt that goes through here each end that holds them all together but as you can see that one's uh, come loose that end but guess what you need to tighten it up a friggin allen screw or an allen key <laughs> but you can't use the allen keys on the kit to tighten it up so you need another one but yeah it's always this side that comes loose as well never this one let me keep those grips grip shifts Knowing me, if I ever do fix up a bike for someone or I want another project or something, I've got them there. Right. Oh, I'm all over the place with this filming, aren't I? Uh, I've got a tool tray right here on the actual stand and I'm still throwing them on the sofa. Right. 
you're the wrong size, aren't you? You small box. Right, get. Uh, 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 I think it's this one. I think they're fours. Two fours? Yes. Well, the stem isn't too bad. So I may actually just use this one on this particular bike, but I've got another Saracen that needs work as well. So I'm going to see if I can get both done. Not at the same time. The other ones, the forks are completely shot in. That's why I want to reuse these ones for this bike. That is all that's wrong with them. They just need repainting. Uh, but the ones on the other Saracen are completely shot. I mean, they work, they go up and down, but it's like riding on top of a sponge. So much as fart and they'll drop. Alright, now we've got four bolts like this. Your best way to do them up is opposites. So I just screwed that one up till it went tight. Screw that one up. Give. We go to this one. Screw that one up till it goes just tight. Like that. I don't need to go overly tight because this is only temporary. That one was already tight. And so you just go holds it. It gives you a nice even clamp down on all four bolts. Right. What I want to do now is release the bike. Sit this upside down on the floor for now. I need to take the tools off of this, put them on the uh, makeshift tool bench, and uh, fold the stand away. Like so. Done. And even this bit will uh, drop as well. And if you really do need no space to stow it away better that this bit will come off because you can just unscrew your hand bolt there and slide it off. Also for handlebars to stop them swinging around you've got this bar here that just straps around it. I'll show you that another day when I'm putting the bike together because I will need to use that. Otherwise you'll constantly get smacked in the head by a handlebar which isn't pleasant. Ask me how I know. Ask me how many times that had to happen before I conceded defeat and started using that bar. Right, I'm going to get the bike in shot at least, even if I'm not. This will make life uh, putting quick release wheels in it a lot easier. So I can actually see what I'm doing. Yeah, there we go, it's just dropped straight in. This um, skewer might need a bit of WD 40 down it because that's a bit. Uh, on the stiff side to slide back and forth, but that we can do later. One. I suppose it doesn't matter which way around to put the back wheel in, does it? It's not doing anything. And two. There we go. It's not on that rim properly, but again, I don't need to worry about that right this minute. That one alright. I was just making sure they weren't buckled. Right, question. Can I get this bottom bracket off? Or is that really going to put up a fight just to pee me off? Um, I suppose there's only one way to find out. See, with it on the floor like this, I prefer to do these on the floor because I can get more force. I can't get the force in the stand. So, it's all right so long as your crank isn't being uh, too much of a pain to get off. See, so I can get the force down on this one while it's on the floor, and I couldn't do this while it was in the stand.
still get like a Dior crank. There we go. Well, actually, I'm not fussed what it is. I prefer Shimano, like this one. You know, just so I'm replacing like for like near enough, but it, I'm not going to go for Dior if I can't find them. I'd go for a modern equivalent. Um, in fact, I'd need to get two of these because my other Saracen needs one of these as well. Top chain ring was warped when I got it. I can't actually wait to do a video on that one because I've got a lot of history with that. Well, I say a lot of history, I've got a history with that bike. What have I done with my 15mm wrench? Is it on here? I'm just going blind. No, it's not on there. And I need it. Or an adjustable. Could use an old crescent wrench. I know people hate that, but... <laughs> My uh, 15's gone walkies. Alright, so... I don't know if you can see it, the water's running off me just doing this. Oh. Right. Um, I can't remember if I've already said, but I've ordered... Um, I think I did say I've ordered the uh, handlebar stems. I'm watching some forks, at least for the other bike. I haven't looked for these yet. It really is awkward filming when you're on your own. Mm. Not a cameraman that could work for a sandwich. Or a camera woman. Oof. Camera person, that's the one I was looking for. Still old school, I think, because I still like to call things the old way, like cameraman, postman, fireman, that sort of thing, or postman, I should say, not postman. I tell you, you know, times change. So. Is that going to screw into there? bit slow really. I should have tried to get the pedals out while it was this way up. I should have a second. Oh, I don't think I know where the 15 is. Is it over here? No, the screwdriver and knife is, but not the... <sighs> it's one of the most annoying habits I have. I'll find another one. That is a 15. Try and do. I'll try and remember which way round. It has a bit of grass. I thought the bloody axle had split. I was going to say that's the first time I've seen one do that. If I had split. Okay. This side's a left thread or a right thread. I think it's right. <laughs> yeah, which means I've got to go that way with it. Ooh! I don't need to buy a crank. Hopefully. That's just pissed off the neighbour. <laughs> this is the only reason I was going to buy a new crank for it, because I didn't know if I was going to get the pedals off. That's aluminium, and as I said earlier, steel. <laughs> they don't like mixing. Right, there's another bit of crap in the bin. Yeah, that is actually all right. I can't see it bent or warped, so well, I'm going to have to invest in one for the other bickle. Because it is knackered. Uh, 
this one should be a left thread. to remember as well if you're going to do your own bikes. So we all must remember that. Left pedal, left-handed thread. It's lefty um, lefty tighty, righty loosey. Instead of the other way around. Right, now I need me extractor. No, I don't. I need a bit of steel wool which is over here. I don't know what I'm doing instead of going around in circles. It just looks like I don't know what I'm doing. This is normal thread, this bit. Even on this side, it is. There we go. Got the thread to play. It's a bit stiff because I can. Well, there's obviously dirt in there still. Didn't clean that out as thoroughly as I cleaned out the other side, did I? Last bit. While it's upside down, at least, will be the uh, BB, aka the bottom bracket. Cool. To screw that one in all the way. Look at that. <laughs> screw it in all the way. And get it off. Almost all the way. Only like a millimetre or so to spare, so I'll have to open that up. I really should get a new one of these. This has done a heck of a lot of work. But this, this puller was part of a bicycle tool kit I bought from Lidl's, again. Um, about eight years ago? If no, ten years ago now. And, in theory, it's still going strong, despite looking a bit warm. Especially on the end of the other end of uh, this, that pushes on your bottom bracket axle shaft. That's looking a bit worn. That's probably why I have to screw it in so far. I don't know if you can see that in there, but... See, that's looking a bit worn on the end. A bit cone-shaped as well now, but it still works, so... No, I'm not a typical guy in that respect, you know, I don't replace my tools until they're completely broken. <laughs> if they still work, I still use them, kind of thing. Right, hopefully, I've never used, this is part of the same toolkit and I've never used it. It's a lock ring tool. So in theory, on this side, I should be able, shut up. Should be able to get the tool into place. Well, <clears throat> no, not with that one anyway. Um, I'll do it with this one. There's another one. Again, from that toolkit. Oh no, that's supposed to lock in there. And See, I've never used that one either. There is a cheat. Fear not. There is a cheat. It's called a hammer and flathead screwdriver. <laughs> All you got to do is just put it in one of the notches on your lock ring. Just give it a tap. And that is actually unscrewing the whole cap. <laughs> not supposed to do that, but it's not a bad thing that it is. 
Or is this a seal? Is this a seal of BB? No, it isn't. It is a semi-sealed bottom bracket. Which, uh, isn't bad. Now, even though I'm going to replace that, I'm going to keep it because I need to know the length of it. Because, believe it or not, you get different lengths. So, now I need another removal tool. This time, I need that booger. This is the removal tool you'll use for um, semi-sealed and sealed bottom brackets. See if I can get a bit closer so you can actually see what I'm doing. Now that the bike's gotten 20 times lighter. There we go. Now, don't know where it is, but some, what I usually use is a big washer with one of the um, bolts put back through it uh, to hold the tool to this. Just makes life easier. Um, I don't think I've got a washer up here. I keep losing the damn things. It's probably up here somewhere. But, uh, what I need is this one. I could use Bertha, but I think Bertha's a bit overkill for this. Bertha's my uh, Stilson pipe wrench. But yeah, she's a bit big and heavy for this one. This is again, it's a reverse thread, so See, that is why I put the um, bolt back in. I can't, can't put that in and get a good push down on this at the same time. Um, so, may. find a, a washer but that's down in a pot in the shed. Holy moly! <sighs> Not the best video in the, in the world, we've been going for 45 minutes just to dismantle it, but it's there, at least um, as far as I can go with it. Um, I think I've actually got red paint for the forks, so I may just have to get primer. I can't remember what's in my tub of spray paints underneath the bed. <clears throat> but uh, I've got paint strippers, so stripping them down isn't going to be an issue. That's the other reason I decided to respray them. I've already got the gear here. May have to get primer, may have to get a can of red paint or two but it's a bit of fun and a bit of practice spraying as well because I haven't done it for over a year or so and I've got a moped to restore so I'd rather practice on something like this than hopefully it'll come out alright I should have some lacquer in there as well I might just get fresh to be honest it's been under that bed for about a year it's probably still okay but I find with rattle cans if you leave them too long the nozzles dry up and clog up then that can be a pain to use. I might have to put my fan on and just sit here for a bit. Oof. Well, I do want to nip across to Lidl's so I can grab the washer then. And then I've got to hope that's going to come out of there. In theory, as one side is unscrewed fine, the other side should as well. Theoretically. <clears throat> Excuse me. In fact, somewhere, I have actually got a relatively new semi-sealed bottom bracket. But 
But if I can get the right length, I'll just go sealed like I did on my claw butler. But uh, the, you get different length axle shafts. <clears throat> I think it's just going to look sweet when it's done, you know. I'm just spinning the wheel. Wheels need a good clean. I'm going to see if I can get some better wheel skewers for it as well. Cable outers, that's what I was going to look for. You get bored of using black all the time, so I'm just going to use a different colour on it just to snazz it up a bit. <clears throat> I was actually thinking of using blue. I don't know why, I just like blue. You know, I, just want, I want to be a bit different with this build. was toying with the idea of changing his tyres. Front one don't look too bad. I really like the other oils. These are actually best, so I think I might swap these at some point. But out of curiosity, I am going to pump these tyres up at some point just to see if um, they've gone down from the bike sitting or if they are actually punched. But yeah, this one's a good tyre at least. Besides, I've also noticed that the wheels I've just put on the bike have got odd tyres on anyway, and I hate that. I hate odd tyres on a bike. Anywho, <clears throat> that was a very poorly done part one, so I do apologise for that. Um, hopefully by part two, I'll have parts here, I'll have things cleaned up and ready to go back on the bike. Um, and a bit of room cleared. In fact, what I should have done is moved that bollard out of the way. <clears throat> Up the corner or in the bedroom or somewhere or in a bloody skip. I've been tempted to do that because I'm getting fed up seeing it now. It was a nice novelty when I first got it, but I'd like to try and clear space. I can't remember the last time I've plugged it in and turned it on either. So, Anywho, I've gone on for long enough in this video, so thanks a lot for watching. I do hope you'll tune in for part two and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye.